marketing failure or at least not clear marketing win just for the fun of it. Um, when I was going to WWDC, I figured I would, I would do like this marketing campaign where I would distribute a bunch of shirts. So I got like 50 of these shirts printed. It's my shirt. Um, this is the failed initial logo for my company. The iPhone store rejected it initially. Uh, so I totally rebranded my company. I went from toe-to-toe -to -toe games to Kuduko because I felt like this, you know, sort of kung fu thing was all about toe-to-toe -to -toe games, but it just like it fell flat without an image of an iPhone in it. Uh, so, but anyway, I, I kept the imagery and I went out there and like I gave all these people these shirts. I spent a lot of money on shirts. Um, and, and, and it wasn't clear to me, it's still not clear to me what my goal is with this, <laughs> with this image and like what I'm really trying to sell here because yeah. I have really like four different directions that I'm kind of going right now. I've got, you know, my company image, we've got a separate uh, sort of online identity for blogging and whatnot. And I'm trying to kind of capture sort of some kind of cross, um, you know, cross reinforcement. Basically, I want to be able to have, you know, my blogging and, and sort of Twittering and all that kind of stuff be relatively, you know, not commercial stinking. Like, I want it to, to be my own genuine voice, but I want to be able to also sort of use it to promote uh, the, the game that I'm working on and, uh, and the sort of company I'm trying to build. Um, so, so I've kind of got these two different directions that I'm heading there. And, and I try to promote my, my story, but it's one of those things, it's like not too many people know you know, what so this what is, what this you image mean, is. You know, you I, I mean, a lot of people wanted it. You know, and the images that I gave out, this is actually the super high quality, you know, uh, <laughs> leathery <laughs> version of it. But the ones that were just a uh, print transfer, they, they have my, uh, in, in pretty small letters, they have my uh, Twitter ID on it, uh, which then you could use if you want, if you did a search on that, you could also find my blog. But, um, but you know, I, I don't know, I just, I gave a bunch of them away and then I didn't hear anything else. You know, I, actually they're for sale too. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it just it just uh, it just didn't really seem to get gather much momentum. What did you expect to get? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I actually got um, one of the guys at WWDC to stand up and give his presentation wearing this shirt. So I think it's just kind of like the idea of like I just wanted it was just an experiment. I wanted people to be walking around wearing the shirt. I gave it away with the content with the precondition that you have to wear it sometime at WWDC. And I think some people probably did that. But there are just so many people at WWDC, and I just. You know, I only had so many shirts, and there was just no way that I could kind of get, you know, achieve that critical mass. But I wanted people to be walking around and be like, "Oh yeah, there's that symbol. What is that?" You know, that's kind of what I was going for. Yeah. Um, I think that brings up kind of a larger question that you guys might have some experience with. What is your metrics for like a successful uh, PR campaign or a bit of PR that you put out? Like how much time versus output, or what are you going to think That's a good question, and I think you know the ultimate metric is. Do we, you know, does it sell? At the end of the day, do we get X hundred thousands of dollars? Mm -hmm. uh, and largely, you know, until then you can't tell if something went right or wrong. Like it's, I, I was saying that we screwed up a couple of times during right. the ah, but Rohit says, well, we're not done yet, so we don't know. The, I mean, the, the, the very specific metrics, uh, web traffic. You know, so we, we looked at the web traffic on day one when we started and said, okay, here's where it is, and, and then we just watch the spike. You know, we put out a press release, we get a spike. How long does it last? Six days, right? Six days, and then does it go back down to, to where it was, or does it hold for a bit? And, and so that's a, that's a major metric for us, is we just watch our web traffic. You, know, we, we sort of, you can set a goal on that. You can basically say, okay, but by launch, I want to be here, or whatever. Uh, I want to have that many spikes. Um, and so if one press release gets you, you know, X, and then the next press release gets you a third of that, it's sort of like, okay, well, what happened here? Why did we only get a third? And so those are the things. When, when I say we, you know, quote unquote, failed, we still got a bump, but it wasn't as big as the, the first one or the second one. So that yeah. you know, we were disappointed by that. That's one thing that we learned from doing press releases. Is like uh, we did our press release last year around this time, and it was something like it was very yeah. It was really simple. It was like, hey, we have this new quiz system. Check it out. It's awesome. And so we got like a huge amount of traffic. But then the other press releases we'll do, which is maybe like cool data or something like that, we don't get as much traffic. So that was one thing that I really learned is try to make it more actionable. Like Absolutely. To go to your site, check out this cool video of you know the new, the mm -hmm. new game from MacGuffin Games or something like that. 
Ooh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, the obvious thing to you know how many YouTube downloads, how many, how many downloads of the demo, all, anything that's measurable. How about, you know, it, things that are even more abstract, like, you know, number of interview requests, the yeah. quality of those requests. That's right. You know, do you have uh, bloggers asking for, uh, you know, a copy, a demo copy, or do you have PC Gamer asking for a demo copy? Obviously, you need a little bit of both. Uh, and then, you know, how do you know you're doing well? Well, did you get more than you did last time? And was it enough last time to sell enough? One of the, to push enough units? One of the things that, uh, that I've been hearing repeatedly is, and this is kind of backing up a little from before getting to your question, is one, metrics are incredibly important. Two, metrics are something that is measurable by definition. So it's got to be something you can put a number to that means something. And then three, you figure out what metrics you are tracking based on what your goal is. So if your goal is to get PC ga if to get gaming outlets interested in your game, your metric is how many of those contacted you. And if your metric, if your goal is to get people to download your demo, then that's your thing. You know, you don't care as much about your website hits if the goal is to get the demo in people's hands. So it's it's and this is as far as I've gotten. I know there's gotta be more to this, you know, and there's probably tons of wrinkles, people spend their whole lives working on this crap, but you know, like my my you first thing crap. I think that's it's Sorry. <laughs> I, well, the, I think that's the prevail. I mean, that was my prevailing notion for the first five years of marketing. You know, if you build it, people will come. It's, it's, I think, people look at marketing as an evil thing, right? Marketing, they just want people to buy shit, but they don't. It's information transfer. I mean, if I don't give you the information, you won't know about the game. I'd just like to know, I was not using crap pejoratively. <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean that like it's, it's poo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's that crap. Actually, actually, excellent stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might feel a bit off topic, but um, since we're talking about these metrics and that kind of stuff, have you thought about running ads? Is that I don't really know that much about it. Is it way too expensive out of your league? I think you've been able to get. Uh, well, well, I just really quickly have you first exhausted every avenue that's for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. After you do that, especially as an indie, then you can start thinking about ads. I mean, is it? I don't, I don't, I don't know how much that would be. Hey, uh, let's put it this way: if you can get uh, an editor at a reasonable place, let's you know, like Rock Paper Shop, the doctor to write about you. In my mind, that's going to be worth more than an ad, at least on those websites, okay. right? Well, an ad on those websites is probably worth a reasonable amount, and, and I think it's probably it's doable enough if you write interesting stuff to, to, sh to get the free publicity so what they for. So we have not paid for it. And have you looked in further? We well, haven't looked at if it. You, uh, if you drop me an email, I know uh, a bunch of indies that actually feel the opposite of our standpoint, which is that they go for the ads. So like, uh, were you going to mention Klevsky? Yes. Okay, good, because I was going to say that. He is, I mean, he, he does a good job. Are you guys familiar with, uh, what is it, Positech? Klipsky, he uh, does uh, oh. the democracy series yep. of games. He does. He's working on gratuitous space battles. Yes. It's just awesome. Yeah, it looks um, good. I've, I played it. It was. It was like. He does. What's the the Sims one? He does. Kudos. Kudos. Um, and he is like poster child for successful PC space game. Yeah. Like he's okay. making like probably. I think he said he's making like 150 grand a year or so. Like 150 thousand pounds a year. Or, it's, it's, <laughs> and he's, he's, yeah, so, but he uh, he is a big believer in AdSense and Google, and he tweaks obsessively with his his stuff there. So, searching on Klipsky will I'm, I'd be shocked if he hasn't talked more about that than I know. So, I'm I'm figuring if you look at him up, you will find uh, his his thoughts on that stuff. He has a lot. Yeah, and I I've told him that I disagree with his standpoint on everything. You know, everything. Uh, he, you know, he's a, he's a good guy. He does. A lot of things right, but why not free first? I mean, before you drop a dime, why haven't you hit the you know, ER? I'm sorry, press releases. Yeah. Why haven't you hit the blogs? Why well, you my my answer to that would be that it's a measure of if you take time equals money equation. Right. Like it's it's a return. What's your return on investment? So yeah. like it's never free free. It's yeah. time fr it's time free or money free or whatever. So it's all of what you're putting in versus your return. If all these free channels aren't going to get me a tenth of what spending a thousand dollars does, then the cost benefit's not there. Maybe instead of because at Gamer DNA we have no marketing budget, so, there. so it's, <laughs> it's like all on me trying to like make. Do you know ads? I wouldn't expect to do No, we don't. Marketing budget to salary. 
Yeah, basically, it's like, say I'm trying to do really cool shit, and so <laughs> <laughs> that's what I try to do every day, and um, so a lot of it's like PR, so like we're working on press releases and, and um, you know, pitching the editors. One thing I, want, I really wanted to get out there is it's all about relationships with editors. When you pitch them, make sure it's really applicable to their interests, and then when you get an interview with them, read up on the past stuff that they wrote about and try to include that like when you're talking to them. Cause and like try to interview them. Exactly, exactly. Um, but with marketing, like maybe instead of spending money, you could do some sort of partnership with someone. So like what we did is, we'll, um, if you wanted to do like a party at E3 or GDC, it's actually really expensive because 